Hello there, beautiful friends from all around the world. We have got a lot to talk about when it comes to the future of Dragon Ball Super. Uh, well, Dragon Ball overall. So this video is going to be pretty much a huge news blast video because I have quite a bit of topics to discuss with you guys about the movie and about the TV series Dragon Ball Super. So we're going to go ahead and kind of go in order here. Um with various different topics. I really don't know what to title the video except for just, you know, major Dragon Ball Super movie and TV show news uh, about the future of the series. So let's go ahead. I'm going to go through there's going to be different sections here. The first thing I want to discuss is this article from Anime News Network. The show that is replacing Dragon Ball Super, Gigigi no Kitaro, is going to be running for 50 plus episodes in Dragon Ball Super's time slot. Now, this is major news because the series is going to be starting up April 1st, 2018. And if the series ends up being 50 episodes or 51 or 52, it's not going to be too much, but it's pretty much saying here 50 plus, so it's going to be anywhere between 50 or 60 episodes. That means that the series could end either in March or April of 2019, okay? Now, I'm not trying to get anybody's hopes up, but I did do a video said, true or false, is Dragon Ball Super coming back in 2019? And my prediction to all of you was that Dragon Ball Super could return at the earliest in April or July of 2019. This article right here, talking about Kitaro, the anime replacing Dragon Ball Super, which I might actually check out. I might actually watch it, see what it's like. I've never seen a Kitaro show before. Um, this show is going to be running for 50 episodes. Now, if it's if it's only 50 episodes, it's going to end in the middle of March. I would say it makes more sense for it to be 52, 53 episodes, maybe 54. And if it ends in the middle of April, that puts it right in line with, as I said in my previous video, the 30-year anniversary of Dragon Ball Z, which started in April of 1989. And the 10-year anniversary of Dragon Ball Kai, which was April 2009. So what better time to bring Super back than April of 2019? It all fits in. It's all coming together. This was my prediction, my prognostication. I'm not saying that it's guaranteed to return. That's not what I'm saying. And don't take what I'm saying as anything more than that. But based on all this information that keeps coming in, it's a. it seems likely that... There will be a show replacing Kitaro. Like, that has to happen. And it would make sense if Super returned or if there was a new Dragon Ball show after this show ends. This, to me, is a very, very interesting story that I wanted to cover. Next thing I want to cover, guys, Dragon Ball Super movie. This image right here that has been passed around the Instagrams, the Facebooks, and the Twitters, this is fake. This is not real, and if you have seen this image, I'm telling you it is a fake image. However, if you were fooled by this image, I don't blame you because it's pretty damn good. This is a, this artist, whoever drew this, is really good at mimicking Toriyama's style, and it may look real, but it's not. It says there, Yamoshi. It's not Yamoshi. This is, all, this is completely fan-made, passed off as being real, so if you see this image, it is fake. Now... Moving on here, we have a character. This is not fake. This is the character design for the new Saiyan from the upcoming Dragon Ball Legends mobile game. Now, once again, we do not know if this character is going to be in the Dragon Ball Super movie, but I can tell you that it's not the same guy who Goku fought in the teaser at all. But his story lines up with something that was teased before, which is that he's a Saiyan from, from a different time not a different timeline from eons ago and even though he's wearing what resembles universe 6 armor this could end up being a saiyan from universe 7 from planet sadala in universe 7 because remember folks planet sadala exists in universe 7 and the saiyans migrated away from it and went to planet plant and that would eventually they go to war with the sephurians the tuffles and then that would eventually lead to Planet Plant being renamed Planet Vegeta. And you know what happened to Planet Vegeta if you've seen the Bardock special or watched Dragon Ball, read the manga. So this character and whoever's going to be the villain or at least not the villain, but whoever, maybe the villain, whoever's going to be in Dragon Ball Super, the movie uh, could very well be a Saiyan from that time period. Or, some, you know, we really don't know. But I wanted to show you all this because this is indeed real. Also, the storyline of Dragon Ball Legends has been revealed to be very similar 
the Tournament of Power, where they're basically getting characters together from different times, different different parts of the uh, of the galaxy, of the universes, whatever, to compete. That's what it said. I don't have the actual thing in front of me, so I apologize if I misquoted that. But it's going to be like a Tournament of Power, but it's going to be a game. Now, obviously, the game does not line up with the super continuity, but this character in particular, which is as of right now does not have an official name, could end up being having something to do with the movie. But I don't think it's the guy in the trailer because they look totally different. It's not the same guy. But it could be a teaser of things to come. Now, next story I want to get to. Like I said, this is a news blast video. People have been asking, is the Dragon Ball Super movie going to be a global release? Right? We've discussed it. In my original tweets about it, I said that this is going to be a global release. And then I found out that that might not be the case. Well, here is the translation from Herms from Norihiro Hayashida of what he said about the movie okay continuing on from the previous movies battle of gods and resurrection f this current movie will be released not only in japan but overseas as well we are coordinating that right now in japan it debuts at the end of the year december 14th but we're currently coordinating things so that after its japanese premiere it'll be able to debut in america and possible and various countries overseas as soon as possible so look forward to it so that does not say that they're coming out with the movie at the same time even though the interpreter interpreted it as such. It just says they're trying to coordinate for a release. The idea is that, yes, it's very possible they're going to release this movie globally, which means that those of us who are in the UK, in the US, if you're in Canada, we may get to see the movie in December of this year. Very possible. We don't have to wait. Um, or maybe we'll get it in January. It's difficult to really give you an answer on that, but I'm just wanting to clarify that. This does not guarantee a worldwide global release on the same day. It will get a global release, but not necessarily on the same day. We'll find out later on this summer. Also, this uh, this is where that came from, by the way. This is the whole thing about Dragon Ball Legends, and there's the character designs. I want to show you all the original website, which was Dragon Ball News. Now, the last thing I want to discuss with you all does have some mild episode 131 spoilers not anything too crazy this was posted on reddit um and it was by therese thank you therese and it was translated by herms and this is interviews with the voice actors of the various characters in the tournament of power that were eliminated okay and there are some interesting things that are stated here this is the interviews with the voice actors that are going to shed some light on possibly what may happen in episode 131 so i want to go ahead and kind of give you my thoughts on these interviews um horikawa rio horikawa voices vegeta he says that in dragon ball super vegeta has become a good father he's fully adept to his life on earth although he started out as a villain he's now settled down with a family on earth from the movie battle of gods to dragon ball super i've been able to portray various different aspects of vegeta in battle of gods i even got to dance <laughs> which was awesome the bingo game while he used to fight only for his own sake and cared only about getting stronger in dragon ball super he's fought for the sake of others for the first time for the sake of his family for earth for the universe acting as a mentor to kaba is another first i was like wow vegeta's giving him lessons and then he vowed to win and bring kaba back to life even though he started out as a heel he used the wrestling term heel he's not a heel no longer it's deeply moving to see how people can change even aliens although i haven't really been intentionally changing my performance i think that by performing over such a long period of time is changed without me even realizing it just as people develop over time i think that by having a family the nature of his strength has changed before now he only cared about winning but by acknowledging his opponent's strength and his own weaknesses, he has awakened to the true strength beyond simply physical. And I guess that's how he's achieved the power up different from Goku's, right? That's the feeling I get. Love that. Great explanation about the Super Saiyan God, Super Saiyan evolution form. And I like how he got it different than Goku. And I love that Horikawa recognizes how much Vegeta's changed. He's definitely been the most changed character in all of Dragon Ball, from Z all the way to Super. And says here, highlights of the final episode. All you fans, please enjoy the climax of Dragon Ball Super, but it's not like this is the end of Dragon Ball itself. I hope I'll be able to deliver the thrills to you all again. Listen, 
He's coming back for the movie. He's going to be back. All right. Next up, we're going to talk about Toshio Furukawa, who voices Piccolo. Um, Herms translates here about Piccolo. The universe survival arc of Dragon Ball Super closely resembles Tenkaichi Budokai. Piccolo appeared as Ma Jr. at Tenkaichi Budokai, so I'm happy that Dragon Ball seems to be returning to his roots. But unlike the one-on-one -on -one Tenkaichi Budokai, this is a battle royale format that allows for all sorts of combinations and battles. That aspect of it feels like a pr progress. Yeah. Tell us something we don't know. No, I'm kidding. It's, um, he's right, but they, I, I think they executed it a bit poorly in this arc. He goes on to say in Dragon Ball Super Piccolo has spent more time acting like Gohan's housemaid than he has fighting. So he buried Piccolo. Piccolo buried Piccolo here. While it's on its way, that's fun to perform too. It makes me very happy that Piccolo was able to do a lot of fighting alongside Gohan's tournament of power. Dragon Ball is an extremely unusual series, popular around the globe. Recently, I've been invited to pop culture, anime, and manga conventions all over the world, and no matter what country I go, they always have Dragon Ball cosplayers. Normally, countries will have uh, some Japanese series, which they're excited about, and others which they're not, And Dragon Ball, but Dragon Ball is popular everywhere, and its popularity transcends nations, which is true. And now Dragon Ball Super has stopped being a simple tale of good triumphing over evil, which I think shows that Dragon Ball is growing up too. A wide range of people watch it, from children to students to adults. The staff and actors do their best to make sure to please them all. Highlights of the final episode. Dragon Ball has become a series of for all generations in all the world. I think the final episode will be enjoyable not only for children, but for also adults. Uh, I think this episode marks the end of the TV anime for now. I expect that it will probably start up again. You heard it from Piccolo. Of course, everyone should look forward to the movie in December, but look forward to what will happen afterward. We're getting a lot of teases that Super is coming back next year. Read between the lines. I wish there was more I could tell you. Masaharu Sato, who voices Master Roshi. We got some more stuff coming up, folks. This We ain't done yet. <laughs> All right, so sit back and relax. When the universe survival arc began and Kame Senen was elected as one of the 10 warriors, I was surprised. How long can he keep up? Probably not very long, but thankfully he got so many chances to shine. Agreed with that. Even after dropping out, he's continued to cheer on the other warriors. The 10 warriors work together. Even Frieza fights for the sake of his comrades. It helps them out. Frieza, Vegeta, these guys who used to be nasty foes now are like, huh, they did that? I'm happy to see that they're showing off a new side of themselves. That's what makes Dragon Ball great. Says here, how to the final episode. This is the final episode at last. Jiren sure is strong, but I think the highlight will be seeing just how Jiren gets taken down. That's a spoiler. He's not going to win. I warned you about spoilers. Jiren, according to this, is not going to win. I'm really intrigued now. So then it says a message to the fans. Kame Senen trained before Tournament of Power, so now it seems like he's moved beyond being tempted by cute girls. Laughs. I'm hoping that after the Tournament of Power, he goes back to his old self. Dragon Ball isn't ending here, so I'm looking forward to seeing, along with everyone else, what the series, where the series and where Kame Senen goes from here. They're all telling you it's not ending. But until we get an announcement, all we can do is wait. Miko Ito, number 18, about Android 18. In the Universal Survival Arc, 18 fights for the first time in ages. I was so happy. In Dragon Ball Super, she's given birth to Marin and devote. Well, she gave birth to Marin and Z, but whatever. And devoted herself to housework the entire time. But it's good to see what she's kept in shape. I guess they mean that she's become more of a housewife, not that she actually physically gave birth. Uh, what's more, I'm glad that this time around she was able to fight alongside Kudadin, Krillin. After all, she's much stronger than she than, than she than he is, <laughs> and she never gets a chance to fight. Well, I suppose that's what makes 18 so great. She supports her husband Kudadin and is a mother to Marin. But even so, fighting again after not so long, I got my warrior blood got my warrior blood pumping. I got a little choked up too when Krillin would rush to my aid in the midst of battle and cheer me on. He really loves 18. I get a kick out of Mayumi Tanaka-san calling my name in that earnest voice of hers. I love Krillin. There's no better couple in all of Dragon Ball. Oh boy. The shippers are going to get mad at her for that comment. When it comes to the power of love, they're more than a match for the likes of Ribrianne, no matter how young and cute she is. And besides that, having 17 participate and being able to fight alongside him, I never dreamed that would happen, so it made me very happy. Um, message to the fans. 17 saves 18, 18 saves 17. During downtime, the two of them communicate with just one glance. Their hearts beat in unison. It's been a long time since I was able to reconfirm my bond with 17. I think this reunion has been splendid. 17 has survived to the final episode, so I'm cheering him on as hard as I can. I want you all to cheer him on, too. It'll be a, a wonderful climax. 
We got two left, folks. And trust me, they get more interesting. We ain't done. Hikaru Midori Kawa. Tenshin Han. Toriyama Sensei has participated in Dragon Ball Super on all fronts, and you can tell from the storyline that he values the old characters. I'm glad Tenshin Han was selected as one of the Ten Warriors for the Tournament of Power, and that he appeared so much, and that he has had his time to shine. Very satisfying that the Shin Kikoho, that's the Neo Tribe Beam, for those of you who grew up on the dub, came in handy, and that was praised by Beerusama. I'll try and know my place, alas, but I'm very grateful. Besides Tenshin Han, Tournament of Power has had many moments that make you go, oh, they picked up on that. Developments that keep the old fans happy. As a fan myself, I was happy to see the Kami Senen's battles, right? Roshi was awesome. When I stepped into the echo, into the shoes of my illustrious predecessor, Hirotaka Suzuki-san, who, by the way, passed away, um, and took over the role of Tenshin Han from Dragon Ball Kai onward, at first there was some pressure, but with Dragon Ball Super, I've been able to relax and perform Tenshin Han more naturally. Also, I played 16 in Dragon Ball Z, so as a fellow android, I'm glad to see 17 and 18 having such a large role. Highlights of the final episode. I heard that director Ryota Nakamura spent about three months drawing the storyboards for the final episode. Having just finished the recording session and seen the storyboards, their quality is, um, is enough to make me almost believe this. Incredible. I think this might turn out to be an amazing final episode. Story-wise, there's plenty of scenes to make fans' hearts skip a beat, and as a fan, I want to see it soon. Last one, folks. Mayumi Tanaka, who voices Krillin and Luffy in One Piece. Kudadin was invited to the Tournament of Power and sure was very active. Mean, meanwhile, uh, Yamcha wasn't invited at all. I apologize to Toru Furuya, which is the voice actor for Yamcha, writing, I would have been nice if Kudadin had asked, what about Yamcha? Even after dropping out, he cheered on the others. 18, San, Goku, he really is the strongest of all the ordinary earthlings without special abilities, and he excels at supporting others. He cares for his family, cares for his wife. As you can tell from the battle with Rib Brienne, the power of Krillin and 18's love wins out against any other couple. Dragon Ball Super shows they definitely don't won't lose. That's all Krillin needs. Highlights from the final episode. But moving on to the final episode and its highlights, Freeze's battle is really amazing, so is Krillin's brother-in-law, 17. I won't spoil anything, but please cheer on all the remaining warriors. Still, from Krillin's perspective, he was killed once before by Frieza, so he can't voice his feelings. When Goku went to invite Frieza to Tournament of Power, he had mixed emotions. But Frieza's a very charming character. Vegeta's like that too. They're appealing because they're not upfront about their feelings. Krillin is very upfront, but that's what's good about him. I think Krillin beats Goku and Vegeta when it comes to his love for his family. Then, mess to the fans. Oh, I ended up talking about Krillin again. Anyways, though this is the climax of the Universe Survival arc, Dragon Ball will definitely keep on going. This doesn't really feel like the final episode. The TV anime may end, but there's still the movie and games. I think it'll be back again before too long. How many times do they have to spell it out for you? All right. Anyways, that's what I have for you here with this video. I know it's a lot of information. It's a big info dump, but uh, that's what's going on with Dragon Ball Super, both the movie and the uh, TV show. I don't have to reiterate anything. If you miss anything, go ahead and go back and rewatch it. Um, this video, you know, if you miss anything, go to some of my talking points, go back. Also, later on tonight, I'm dropping a video on Jiren not being evil. I'm going to have a discussion with y'all about Jiren not being evil, and I think you guys will enjoy it. And, uh, yeah, I hope you all have a great rest of your day. And, oh, this has been a crazy week, and it's going to get even crazier. So let's all get together and enjoy the ride. See you later.